I think when we started the company, our main focus was uh, surviving a few years and having a, a business that was generating profits and was stable. And then from there, we could uh, we could do whatever. I said, boy, when we were $100 million, we won't have all these challenges. The irony is that when you get to $100 million, you have the same challenges. There's bigger ones. In the Defense Department, we were doing a lot of work that involved using computers to generate complex analysis. Charles and Ivan obviously worked together because uh, Ivan was the Assistant Secretary of Defense and Charles was the Principal Deputy. So between the two of them, they managed the entire office of 120 people. Jan Lodel worked on strategic forces and that was an area that Ivan had supervised previously. I worked for Charles and continue to work for Charles in general purpose forces. And Frank Nikolai was, was responsible for running the Mobility Forces Division. And uh, we just started talking about starting a business. It was very exciting to start something new. I had, when I had come to the Defense Department, I was planning to go to work for McKinsey. I had a job offer from McKinsey when I turned 26. And um, so uh, in starting the business, it was really exciting. And I didn't have any fear that if it didn't work out, I wouldn't be able to find a good job elsewhere. So it was, I wasn't nervous about it. It was just a, a fun thing to do. And as optimistic, we'd, we'd have success. And, it would be a lot of fun. When it became clear that um, that we were not going to stay at the Department of Defense, uh, we started having conversation. I think probably Ivan and Charles had a conversation about um, starting a company. And then uh, Jan Lodel, who worked with closely with Ivan, had conversation with Ivan. And, and uh, then, of course, we had to figure out, OK, you're going to start a business. What are you going to do? So we did a little research. And it turned out that in October of 1969, Fortune magazine had an article about the potential, the unexploited potential of computers in business. And uh, we read that article and we said, boy, that creates a great opportunity for a new business to help companies use computers in ways that are more attuned to meeting business requirements than simply uh, mundane tasks. When we uh, decided to start a business, we knew we'd need some capital to get to get launched. Steve Fenster, who, had, who was at Lehman Brothers in New York, he took it to uh, a group in Lehman Brothers called Lehman Ventures, and they decided to finance us. They gave us $300,000 to get us launched. People ask uh, where we came up with the name American Management Systems. And uh, originally, when we first put together our uh, financing perspectives, we called the company Planning and Management Systems. But in the various conversations we had, we were told that was too generic. The five of us convened in Ivan's office in the, in the uh, Pentagon and uh, spent a couple hours on a blackboard throwing up different names uh, and combinations of words. And in the end, we picked American Management Systems because first of all, we wanted to focus on management as opposed to technology. And secondly, American management was in vogue in Europe American companies were known for their management, and we thought, well, this will be a good name when we eventually go to Europe and uh, develop business with clients there. We uh, decided that people were really important and we were going to hire the best people we could. And we, as soon as we started the company, we went out to various universities and recruited uh, computer science people, MBAs, public policy people from, from the, best, the best schools. The whole idea was it was a meritocracy. Everybody's ideas were important. Everybody should contribute. Everybody's ideas should be respected. And out of that would come the best thinking collectively that would then help us serve the clients in the best way. One of the challenges when we recruited people with experience, because as we got larger, we needed people that actually worked in the industries that we were working in, that really knew the industries the inside out. One of our biggest challenge was to get those people who came in to understand that we were not a bureaucracy. They, many had come from hierarchical organizations, and one of our challenges was to get them to recognize that participation and contributions were a function of your knowledge and what you knew, and, and you should bring it to bear. And if you knew something that was in contradiction to what a senior person was involved with, it's important to get it out on the table and not hesitate. And we had to figure out a way to get these experienced people comfortable dealing in that kind of environment because they didn't come from environments where it was comfortable to do that. Um, AMS also was one of the first organizations to think about titles and seniority not strictly as a function of the number of people one had, but we valued individual contributors 
for the, the power of their intellects and what they can contribute. And so we created uh, two sets of, of titles, with titles that were based on responsibilities and organizations and titles which were based on uh, level of contribution and seniority of the company, independent of whether you had anybody working for you or not. And we were one of the earliest firms to do that. Our initial clients, many of our initial clients came from uh, personal relationships that the founders had with people we had met when we were in government. Uh, in my case, my first major client was Boise Cascade Corporation. And uh, the senior vice president for strategic planning had been a White House fellow in the office of Secretary of Defense. And we went and called on him in his new job at Boise Cascade and presented our suggestions on how we could add value to him. And that's how we were hired. And we uh, proceeded to work for Boise Cascade for three or four years. Actually, in my first 18 months at, at AMS, I went to Boise three weeks out of four, made a lot of trips to Boise, Idaho. Our banking business started as a result of a relationship we had with a former White House fellow who was in the Treasury Department that I knew and uh, I called on him at uh, Wells Fargo in San Francisco and we were able to uh, get an initial engagement which uh, led to 30 projects over the next six or seven years which formed the foundation of our financial services practice. Many of our clients, if not all our clients, were uh, major corporations that did their computer work on major IBM mainframes. And uh, we became known as a company that developed applications, business-focused applications in industries. And uh, the IBM organization saw that we were developing applications and marketing applications that were using a lot of IBM technology. And so IBM came to us and uh, ask us to work with them and so over a period of years we actually worked with some IBM account executives to sell market applications that would uh, utilize larger IBM mainframes. And then in 1989 uh, IBM approached us and said they would like AMS to explain to the IBM senior management how AMS actually did its work on applications. And so uh, I was invited to uh, come to the uh, IBM senior executive meeting uh, un under the auspice of John Akers, who was the chairman of the board, uh, and tell the IBM senior executives the story of AMS and how AMS developed applications and marketed them and, and uh, how that business had evolved. And uh, a month after that, we were approached by IBM who said they wanted to make an investment in AMS so that they could work with us more closely and take our ideas and work with them to increase the uh, application capability within IBM and to bring our expertise to more IBM customers. Our IBM relationship was important. Uh, it wasn't a pivotal relationship, but it did give us increased credibility with major companies because IBM would take us to these organizations and uh, there were no question about who's AMS because IBM was a shareholder they were introducing us and so it gave us enhanced credibility. We were working with with uh, SS Kresge Kmart and uh, I can remember having a lunch with the chief financial officer of Kmart and in the course of the conversation I, uh, I asked about Kmart's competition and uh, he described what he described was a little rinky-dink company out in Arkansas that was building stores in little cities and would never amount to anything. And of course, that is what became Walmart. Well, when I left AMS, I got involved with a number of companies uh, that were in a growth mode and uh, small companies that were trying to get become a larger company. And having gone through that exercise at AMS, um, I tried to take some of the lessons learned, both good and bad. Uh, some of the good lessons were the importance of hiring great people and giving them responsibility early to challenge them. That would create satisfaction on their part, would develop them. It would incent them to stay with the business because they saw that they would get advanced as fast as they could, they could progress. We put people into new challenges, and if they made it, it was great. If they didn't make it, it wasn't so good. 
Uh, but combining that experience with some observations of other businesses that had more structured development to help people become take on new responsibilities, become managers, become mentors, and so forth. I was able to capitalize on what we didn't do as well as we, in hindsight, should have done at AMS to help other organizations uh, do that going forward. One of the in more interesting clients that I dealt with was um, a company, Signet Bank, who uh, recruited a couple of executives from Strategic Planning Associates, which was a strategy consulting firm that AMS worked with, recruited them to uh, run their credit card business and create a new credit card business. And uh, as soon as they went there, I approached them and we uh, engaged them as a client in our, uh, with our various credit management solutions. And a few years later, they were so successful that uh, Signet Bank decided to spin off that credit card division and became Capital One. And uh, when they did that, the Capital One founders wanted a board member who had a business-oriented understanding of information technology and data analytics. And so they asked me if I would join the board of the company going public as a New York Stock Exchange company. And uh, I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that, but it can't possibly jeopardize the relationship that AMS has because they were an important AMS client. And uh, so it turned out, this was in the days before Sarbanes-Oxley, when it was possible to uh, be a board member of a client a company. And uh, so for a number of years, you could read the proxy of Capital One and find out how much business AMS was doing because it had to be disclosed. Uh, but that became a phenomenal success and I served on the board of Capital One for 23 years from a $5 billion asset company to a $350 billion asset company.